there we go oh it always changes this my camera i never quite know where to go or how far away i need to have you hello uh it's gone one o'clock here in the uk where i'm based and i'm jumping on today to talk to you about uh cozy calm okay so uh, if you are joining me live, don't forget to uh, let me know that you're here, either hashtag live or an emoji or any question that you might have. And uh, obviously, if you're watching on replay, hashtag replay is uh, very much appreciated. Um, and yeah, hopefully um, I'll give you a little bit of a deep dive into what, you know, Cozy Calm actually is. So. It's uh, coming into autumn, uh, which is what I like to call the Hugo High season. It's the time of year where you can't actually see it, but I've got my little candle burning here. Uh, my little stag candle with my uh, lovely uh, beeswax candles, uh, sustainably sourced. And uh, I've got my tea here. I've got my favourite herbal tea um, on the side. I've got my blanket because sometimes it does get a bit chilly in my office. Um, and obviously I've got all my other lovely things like, you know, my, my sheepskin truck and all of that. And some of those things are harder maybe to appreciate and incorporate operate in the summer because we have other things you know but these things that I've just pointed out now are really what people associate with Hugo and uh, it's really funny because uh, originally in the English language Hugo was uh, translated as being cozy or um, you know like like a, like an aspect of, of being cozy or, or looking cozy um and i have done many talks now <laughs> about the the true meaning of hugo um but i think it's it's very important to point out that uh hugo and cozy are not necessarily the same but i did choose to call this little talk uh cozy calm because I wanted to talk about how we perceive our uh, outer environment and Hygge and how we can use that to uh, go to a deeper level of calm and not just the aesthetics of setting the scene. So uh, many people come to Hygge because they love the aesthetics uh, and it's interesting. Um, often what people tell me is that they were attracted by the calm. Uh, and yet a lot of people misunderstand it as if it's all about the hot beverage and the tea and the rugs and the, you know, like the, the throws and the cozy socks and all of that. And although they are very lovely aspects, they are uh, merely there to help you set the scene. So um, I like to think of Hygge as like a, a stepping stone, hence also the, the name of my, uh, of my upcoming book. Um, but, um, it's, it's like you can, you can go deeper with it. So in Denmark, where I'm from, Hugo is, uh, something that's ingrained in, in everyday culture. It's something that's ingrained in the language. Like you can't have, uh, you can't say two sentences without having the word Hugo in there. Um, but there's like different meanings to Hugo. And Hugo can take place at many different levels. So there's like uh, what most people will associate maybe with Hugo uh, is that initial, you know, like setting the scene, everything looks serene, it looks lovely, it looks cozy, it looks inviting. But the next step is then to get yourself into that state as well, which, you know, setting the scene alone is not enough. Hi, Lorella. Glad you could make it live. So, um, I you might have heard me mention this before, but when I uh, when I first came to the UK, I was working in journalism, and it was really funny because there was um, a journalist who took on like uh, a week of living Hugo, and um, I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna check this out. 
and she um it was really interesting the way that that she approached it which i think was maybe how a lot of people approached it at the time and maybe still do hence me still doing these talks uh that it was all about you know like the aesthetics and now now we have to relax you know like and now now we have to feel cozy and now we have to have the hygge you know it has to be on on demand you know because that's the culture that we are surrounded by um but she completely obviously missed the point and no wonder she ended up getting very very stressed because you know she found it very very tiring that everything had to be like so you know like on on schedule hygge but that's a joke in itself because you cannot do that you can plan for hygge and you can hope for it to take place but that's only really the the setting the scene aspect of it and the next aspect is then how you actually translate that to um take place within yourself to have that very deep sense of hygge that sense of calm and as we're going into the autumn season now is a really good time to kind of practice that because um nature in many ways is helping us now hygge is inevitably linked to nature uh we are nature um and the fact that uh, at least for the northern hemisphere obviously if you're in the southern hemisphere you, you're going to get there you know um but it's it's when the the nature you know the the weather starts turning colder it starts turning a bit more inhospitable um and we we seek refuge in a different way in our homes um and it's more back to kind of the natural state of of original living if you like um where it's all about the seeking shelter uh but it's more than shelter it's it's the sanctuary and our homes become the sanctuary and we can do all these lovely things um to make it even more lovely um but the reason of we are using like candles and you know like hot beverages and you know having our blanket and our sheepskin it it reminds us i think at a very deep level of uh what it was like in ancient ancient times when uh we were it was literally a life and death situation and we had to seek refuge and that sense of relief and calm that we can achieve when we allow ourselves to sink into that now we no longer are at that state it's for very few people that is still the case and and thank goodness for that um but um it it's very deeply ingrained in us and it it nurtures not only our bodies because it helps us obviously to stay warm uh and relax it helps our nervous system to relax the soft glow of warm light is better for your body and your eyes than than sharp light obviously if you have to do something where you have to see you have to have like very good directional lighting um but um you know all the harsh lighting and and the harsh sounds they affect us they affect our bodies and our nervous system and the the softer approach to it all the lovely soft furnishings um the tactile uh you know surroundings that we have help us to kind of sink back into that i guess some remembrance if you like um of how lucky we are you know like it's it's not a case of us against the environment it's a case of um letting our environment support us uh, and all of that you know the the coziness the hygge the the comfort the sanctuary none of that would be there if it wasn't for the fact that it was slightly cold outside and maybe it's a bit windy maybe it's raining maybe it's cold maybe there's snow maybe there's frost you know um so it's it's all interlinked but once we've set the scene uh and once we can relax our nervous system and that's a very important thing actually in our modern day culture because we get so highly strung and wired because we've got so much on our to-do list all the time and uh our attention is in constant demand um so once we can actually allow ourselves to just switch off a bit 
we can also allow ourselves to sink into like the next step of Hugo, if you like. It's where we allow ourselves to sink into our heart. And my definition of Hugo is really when you can meet the world through your heart and you can communicate heart to heart as well. So not only does it mean that you are taking yourself kind of out of, I don't don't quite know how to to, to say this. I want to say a lot of things at once. Um, But basically it's it's kind of taking a step back and seeing the heart in everyone else. Um, It doesn't mean that you necessarily agree with them. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, you will have to go on with them, but you see them for what they are. You know, they are a heart as well. You know, and uh, at the end of the day, we all need the basic sanctuary. We all need the warmth. Uh, We all need a place where we can feel safe and we can let our guard down. And when we can come from a place of understanding that, you know, base level, we are all one, we can also communicate um, in a more authentic, open way um heart to heart heartfelt communication now you might not want this with complete strangers um so often when we talk hugo we talk about kind of that intimate cozy feeling with people that we feel safe with that we love that we appreciate um but do we also do the same with ourselves so in order to really appreciate Hugo, we have to allow ourselves to sink into ourselves as well and allow ourselves to be very open and honest with ourselves as well. And again, it can be hard because uh, we live in a world where we, you know, don't get much downtime. You know, there's lots, lots of things to do. There's uh, all the time um, we have to maybe be at work, we have to be with the kids, we have to be at home, we have to be with our partner, and it can feel like we're jumping from role to role. But all the way through that, where where are you? So have you connected in with actually your, your true self? And If so, is that also something that you allow yourself to do on a regular basis? For example, if you're really into your hygge, you will probably try and do as much hygge as you can, um, especially if the weather outside is turning a bit cold. Uh, And it, it invites you to also take that pause and to kind of look inside and to do some self reflection. Now, it doesn't need to be you know, like diving into your own shadow and doing all that work, although it could be. But most of the time, it's about just connecting and and checking in with yourself. And when we can do that, when we can allow ourselves to sink out of our heads and into uh, our heart, uh, into our inner sanctuary, then um, we can achieve that cozy feeling also on the inside just as we can on the outside and this is regardless of where you are okay now you do need to have your basic needs met so hence me earlier talking about you know um the 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 back in ancient times when we needed the shelter you know we needed the warmth uh we needed uh basics the basics like food and water uh, to to survive um, and once we have those really basic needs met that's when we can also allow ourselves you know to start checking in with how am I doing today um, and once that becomes more of a daily practice it becomes easier to take this with you and take this with you on on the go as well so um, it could be that you have like a regular break at work and you take some time out to kind of really check in with yourself. Now, it could be that you do this with a colleague. It could also be that you do it on your own. How do you do it? You have to kind of set your own little hookah practice. Now, it's not, for most people, it's not very practical to kind of 
take all the, 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 the lovely things from home into the office. And even if you did, it wouldn't have the same feeling. So you have to kind of come up with um, something that allows you to make that connection regardless of what. And sometimes you just need like one thing. Okay, so one of my uh, my favorite things uh, about autumn is scarves. Okay, and why do I like scarves? Is whenever I go outside, I can just wrap up warm. But I can still feel the cooler wind on my cheeks, you know. But I I tell myself I'm not going to get a cold. So if you uh, if you have the possibility, you could go for a walk. Okay, a lunchtime walk. Um, it's really good that a lot of employers have started to realize that this is actually not only a benefit to the person doing it, but for the, for, for everyone. Okay. Because it really helps you to reset your mind. Uh, yes, it gives you energy and exercise, but most importantly, it also gives you that very important break and possibility, possibility to kind of dive in deep inside. And why did I mention the scarf? It's like taking your little piece of comfort with you as you are walking around. It can be tactile. It can be something, you know, like if the wind's cold, you know, just the feeling of it. Maybe it's the smell of it. Maybe um, it's an association, a, a memory that you have with it. So you could do that. Um, it could also be that you go to like a coffee shop around the corner, you know, and you sit down in a faraway corner, you know, where maybe it's a bit more quiet, a bit more darker, uh, and you can just unwind there for a little while. Because again, you will hopefully be in a place where people, that, that's the whole point. You don't have people coming up, tapping you on the shoulder saying like, can I ask you a question? No, this is about you having the opportunity to really dive inside and find that calm and check in with yourself. Um, but also a big thing, of a, a big part of this is obviously the gratitude as well. Uh, being grateful not only for the fact that you have, you know, your basic needs met, um, that you have the opportunity to check in with yourself. Um, but then also, you know, like great gratitude for everything that you are, uh, and everything that you do and everything that you will do. Okay. So it's not, and, and I didn't say have because have is, is not really anything that's related to this. This is not about owning anything. This is about the feeling and, um, you cannot, you can't feel things. <laughs> well, you you can you can feel soft things, uh, but you can um, the th we we buy things because we think that they're gonna give us a feeling of something. So at the end of the day, it's never about the things; it's about that feeling inside. So the 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 deeper sense of the hygge again is again not linked to any of the things that you've bought uh, it has created something and it has created on kind of you're going deeper into the hygge um a moment that supports you to really check inside with yourself and to just yeah have a have a little honest conversation with yourself to ask yourself maybe what do i need right now not what do I think I need, but what do I feel I need? Uh, and it can also be, you know, just literally enjoying the moment. Because the beauty about real Hugo is not that it needs to result in anything. It is that you are fully present in the moment and that you are in that open state uh, of kind of the open heart. So if you are open with yourself, um, that you are honest with yourself or if you are with other people that you are meeting them from a similar kind of uh, place. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to have a sip of my tea now which I've been holding and I really want to have a sip. Mm. Even that is just lovely. Um, so to sum up, the cozy calm. Hugo is, I don't know how many times I hear myself say this, but I'll say it again. It's not about the aesthetics. It, uh, it is about the feeling. 
Um, the autumn and winter seasons are great because they they help us to set the scene. They really transport us into a place where all of the, the stuff, all the candles, the socks and the hot beverages really come into their own right. Uh, and I believe deep down inside there's a, there's a memory of, of how this makes us makes us appreciate the sanctuary that we're in and once we feel safe and we have our basic needs met that's when we can allow ourselves to dive into the really deeper levels of Hugo the more personal transformational because it's where we start asking ourselves you know like what do I need right now how am I feeling right now um, and taking it from there really um, it doesn't need to be anything serious. It can literally be a check-in. It's like, how am I doing today? How am I feeling today? Because we can lose ourselves. And it's so easy to lose ourselves. Uh, when we've got to-do lists and we've got jobs and we've got people that rely on us. Um, but how do we check in with ourselves? Because at the end of the day, our, you know, we have many relationships with people throughout our lives. Um, but the one that we will have uh, all the way from birth till we die is the relationships with ourselves and our heart, um, or the relationship with yourself and your body and your soul. You can look at this at many different levels, but you have the most important relationship kind of with yourself, your higher self, your, your heart, your mental well-being. You can call it many different things. Um, so taking that time, maybe in a couple of pauses throughout the day, hopefully also more, but we have to start somewhere, is a really, really beautiful way to start um, practicing self-care in a, in a very practical way uh, and hopefully in a way that also makes your heart sing. And also that's easier to share with other people. Um, that's the whole point. It's a shared journey. Um, and we want to enjoy as much of it as we possibly can. So I hope you have some takeaways from this talk about the cozy calm, how you can take the deeper levels of, of Hugo with you, that you can have that sense of openness, gratitude, um, and coming home I guess for a lot of people who get is like coming home um, and the most important place to come home is really to ourselves so I hope you will have many opportunities to practice that in the many months to come and as always if you have any questions please let me know I shall do the best to answer them enjoy the rest of your day and lots of cozy calm to you Bye.